Hi guys. All right, so today's video is a follow-up to low carb. I get so many questions on low carb lifestyle and I finally had the chance to do this video. I, if you can tell, I am moving right now and I'm sitting on my floor because I am purchasing a home and there's going to be, long story, there's going to be a gap between moving into my home and moving out of my old place. So movers left with the last box earlier and I figured my hands are free now or never. So I wanted to try and answer some of your questions or clear up some misconceptions when it comes to low carb. If you're interested in some of my tips for low carb lifestyle, then stay tuned. All right, so one of the biggest questions I get is how many carbs a day do you need to intake if you are trying to lose weight quickly? If you're in a weight losing mode and you're trying to lose a lot of weight really quick, then you'll probably want to take your carbs down to between 25 and 30 grams of carbs per day. Again, that's 25 to 30 carbohydrates, grams of carbohydrates per day, not per meal, per day. And that would be for the first 10 days. It's called an induction phase, I think is what the Atkins diet calls, calls it. But it's only for 10 days. And then you're going to gradually increase your carbohydrates by 10 to 15 uh, per week going forward. Uh, just normally, I tend to stay below 100 gram of carbohydrates now at the weight that I'm at. I'm currently at the weight of about 130. I think I was last weighed 136 and I had my health assessment that I was going to show you guys, but it's all packed up now. So when I get in my new place and I do another one of these videos, I'll try to show it to you. But I get a lot of feedback on some of my low carb videos about my weight, whether it's unhealthy or not. And I'm definitely a bill of health. So I have that and I am very comfortable with my weight, how I look. And so I appreciate all of your feedback, um, but when it comes to how I look personally, you can keep the comments to yourself if, if it's negative because, you know, I like the way that I look. I like to be thin. So going forward, uh, another question that I get most often is what kind of snacks can you eat on low carb? Um, you can eat a lot of different snacks. Um, you can eat you know, fruits and vegetables. Um, I've started to make these kale chips that I like to make by using kale. Um, you just toss them in some olive oil, a little salt and pepper. Even if you have some um, popcorn seasoning, you know, like the cheese that you would put on popcorn that you make, you can sprinkle that on top of the kale, a little salt and pepper, throw it in the oven for like 10 minutes and then pull them out and then they're really crunchy like chips. I like to eat pickles. Um, popcorn is a lower carb type of crunchy snack if you're the type of person who likes to crunch on potato chips. But if you're really in the weight loss mode, then it's really, you're going to crave the food and the snacks that you like to eat. And I use this quote before of putting your body on a budget, but it really is true. You know, like for example, I'm in the middle of purchasing a home right now and I had to make the choice whether or not I was going to purchase certain shoes or go on certain vacations or certain trips. I know the world hair show is this weekend. I'm not going to be attending with one of my really good friends here on YouTube, even though I'd love to go have girls day and have fun. I am purchasing a home right now, and if I want to do anything else for the rest of the year, it's best for me to stay my butt put and just sacrifice for the time being until I can accomplish my goal. I'm sleeping on the floor right now, you know, for the next two and a half weeks until I close on my home versus, you know, waiting and running into other financial issues with as far as my move was concerned because it made sense for where I'm at in my life right now and for the budget that I have going forward. And the reason I'm bringing that into low carb because it's the same process. It's just you're accomplishing a different 
you know, goal in your life. It may not be the purchase in a home goal. It may be getting in control of your weight and your health and taking charge of that. And so it's very important to detoxify not only yourself physically, but you have to detoxify yourself mentally. There's so many preconceived notions that dieting means that you're sacrificing, you're starving yourself or that you're, you know, not eating or that you're, you know, depriving yourself of something that you feel that you deserve. Just like so many people feel that they deserve a big house and they foreclose on it because they feel they deserve it because they get up and go to work every single day. You don't deserve 4,000 square feet. Yes, you deserve to be safe and to have a home that you feel proud of, but, you know, to that extremity, you know, to each their own and everyone has their own, you know, different personal finances, just like everyone has their own different personal body finances as well or budgets or I hope I'm not losing you here. The purpose of me bringing up that whole analogy is to try to put it into perspective for people who are really hung up mentally on understanding that losing weight is going to be a struggle. No matter what journey you're on, no matter what diet you you you, you decide to go on, but for me and for a lot of people that have given me feedback on these videos, positive feedback that this is definitely working for them low carb as far as a long term goal is a lifestyle diet this is which you know the two are the same lifestyle and diet are the same exact thing look the word up so when you know a person tries to give you or inform you of their diet or a person tries to give you information on making better choices and better selections as far as you know the type of food you eat is concerned it's not a bad thing, but the word diet has been, you know, I mean, it's been scrutinized and it's pretty much like a curse word to say the word diet now, even though technically diet means lifestyle. But to bring that back <laughs> to why I even brought the word up, you know, you just have to understand if you're on this diet or any other diet, in the beginning, it's going to be a struggle. This is the most realistic type of diet I've ever been on because it's been successful it's realistic. The type of food you can eat tastes good. It, you know, you, I feel you're full. And those are the big hurdles to me with diets. You're either really hungry, the food you're eating it tastes bland. You can't eat any sauces or any of anything that just makes the meal pleasurable. And you're hungry. And it's so like the feeling of hunger is, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, you know, and then to be fortunate enough to live in a country where, you know, the average person really isn't hungry, you know, it's like to take that for granted and starve myself by eating, you know, this much food and then three peas and seven lettuce leaves and some lemon slices. No, no, thanks. You can keep the diet. Um, but with this diet, you have to sacrifice in the beginning with the sweets and the carbs, you know, so in the beginning, there's not going to be a lot of snacks for you to eat as far as being able to pick up a bag of chips, if that's your normal snack food. But it's important to understand that your body will evolve and change as the diet goes on. Like really, I'm not really a big snacker, but before I started Low Carb Lifestyle, I was a really big snacker. I used to buy any Hostess cake snack anything boxed and individually wrapped, you name it, I used to eat it. But now my, my, my taste buds have changed. My cravings have changed. I can go longer periods of time without eating and I can turn down food and I can forget that I had a candy bar in my purse when there used to be this invisible reminder in my head at all times before detoxifying and before, you know, becoming before getting in control of my addiction, because that's what it is. Most people are really addicted to the foods that they're consuming. And so it's very hard to be successful on a diet without taking the proper steps to get over that addiction. So, you know, back to having the candy bar in my purse and knowing that it was there and it was like, basically money eating a hole in your pocket, you know, the food is like eating a hole in your pocket, your, your mental brain is saying, eat me, eat me, eat me. I'm there. Why aren't you eating me? But now I'll 
put a coat in a closet and then pull it out and forget that I ever had candy in there because that clock I've become I've I've gotten control of that and it's because of what I now in turn put in my body. So in the beginning it's really important to do a 10 day induction phase which I am not a science I am not a um I am not a nutritionist, I'm not a scientist, I am not a biologist, I'm not a medical professional, I am not even in the healthcare field. So you always want to consult with a medical uh, provider, your doctor, your, your care physician, your primary care physician before you start any type of diet. But what I do have to say is why it's so hard for people to grasp the concept that Eating foods that are high in fat, that taste good, equals being able to lose weight without running yourself to death on the treadmill. It's so hard for people to grasp that concept because of how you've been trained by these doctors and by marketing and by capitalism and by what you see on television because it's a multi-trillion dollar industry. Not billion, there's trillions and probably whatever the next level beyond that is because all of the industries are connected. If you've come to one of my videos or you're watching one of my videos, it's probably because you watch some of my other videos and you're subscribed to me or you were interested in the title for more than one reason. And a lot of the time it's because you're seeking information because whatever information you have now has brought you to the same conclusion and it hasn't worked for you. So is the information I'm giving you published in a science journal Probably. Am I a science major? No. And I'm going to link you to a video below my video. There is a lovely YouTuber here who did a response video or kind of like a follow up video to one of my videos that I did about low carb lifestyle. And I think she is a science teacher. Um, so you want to click the link below this video here and I will put her username here. Hi, love. So that you can get an understanding scientifically if that's what you're needing you know to you know give you the proof to go on this journey and actually do this and take the information I'm giving you to try and lose the weight I subtract fiber I, sub I subtract protein and a lot of people don't do that they just subtract fiber from um, the total amount of carbs so I get a lot of comments on that, like, why are you subtracting fiber and protein? I've never read that. It's not protein, it's just fiber. Well, because I don't under, I can't explain it to you scientifically, in, you know, general layman's terms, the reason I subtract fiber and the reason I subtract protein is because in one of those journals that I read, it's not necessarily the total amount of carbohydrates that you are consuming that is what you need to be concerned about. It's the total amount of carbohydrates that affect the insulin that cause the body to go haywire, set the insulin off, and cause you somewhere along the chain to start storing the carbs that end up turning into fat. So you're not actually... When you take something like a fried chicken breast or something like that and you take that those carbs from the crust and you take it in with the whole chunk of, of chicken breast, the protein and the carbs, so the, the crust is sitting on top of this chicken breast. When you take it in and there's all that protein in the meat, it's not affecting your body the same as if you just ate the crust that's on the actual chicken breast, you know, with a bowl of macaroni and cheese or something, you know. So the protein kind of absorbs it, sucks it up, kind of fills up, you know, whatever is processing through your body so that you can kind of have more, if, if that makes any sense. And I know that kind of sounds crazy because I really can't under explain it to you scientifically, but to be honest with you, you know, try it. Try it and see if it works for you because it's worked for me and 
to me that the proof is in the pudding i hope some of this information was helpful for you because i think those are like the top three things as far as you know the questions i get and i felt it was important to try and come to you now i am in the process of putting a low carb video together and so i'm going to share with you just a teaser of some of the photos of some of the meals that i've been documenting but i will definitely come to you with a more put together edited video of the actual meals i'm actually about to go to a buffet right now with my daughter because we have nothing to cook in and i am going to video what I end up eating to show you guys, you know, um, how you can eat out low carb. I just wanted to pop in here and answer those three quick questions that I get asked most frequently and, you know, just give you guys something to think about and definitely leave your questions below. Just understand this when you're leaving your comments. Like, not everybody wants to have a big booty or big hips or big thighs. I mean, for some reason, people think that all black girls want to have a big booty. And the truth is, not all black girls want to have a big booty, okay? So, it's okay if you want to be thin and you want to, or you want to be thick. You know, I'm thin and I live this lifestyle because I feel good from the inside out. I feel good in just the way I look. I feel good in how I feel. Um, I recently even gave up caffeine, which I'm going to share with you guys in another video. And I know you're probably like, what? And I've been a, a caffeine addict. And when I say addict, I mean like headaches and all for a really long time. But I gave up caffeine. It's been about two and a half weeks, almost three weeks now. And I'm doing really good. And I just feel like a new person. So believe me, what you're putting in your body definitely ties into how you're going to feel and whether it's mentally or physically it, it, it changes your life when you change what you put into your body it's not just about you know how you look in jeans or how you look in that dress it's how you feel inside mentally physically all of that so I hope this helps you my purpose is to just share my experiences and the information to help make your situation better so Thanks for watching and like always, peace guys and God bless.